Levinson, and welcome to Light on Light Through, episode 228, my review of The Matrix Resurrections, a non-spoiler review. Well, I just saw The Matrix Resurrections on HBO Max, and you know what? It may be the best Matrix since The Matrix itself, that is, the first movie. So what I'm telling you is that Resurrections, in my view, may be better than the two earlier sequels, certainly better than the third in the original trilogy, Revolutions. Now, one of the reasons I'm thinking this is how well the meta angle is handled in Resurrections. We find Neo working as a programmer, whose great accomplishment was writing a computer game called, drumroll, The Matrix. He sucked into a journey in which reality versus fiction, as an explanation for what is happening, vie for our attention at every incandescent turn, and there are plenty of those. Let's talk about the acting. Keanu Reeves as Neo and Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity were excellent. I was prepared to be annoyed at Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as Morpheus and Jonathan Groff as Smith because, well, their original incarnations by Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving were so brilliantly, searingly memorable. But you know what? The new actors for these crucial characters were pretty good. In the first three movies, Smith was, for the most part, the more keenly acted and therefore more unforgettable character. And even though Groff is not quite as knife's edge as Weaving, his Smith will be somewhat memorable too, I think. Now, among the new characters, by far my favorite was Neil Patrick Harris as The Analyst, a big step up from Doogie Howser, M.D., but in a related medical profession. And I very much like the unpredictable villainous kindred relationship between The Analyst and Smith. Both had a fair share of bon mots, And if I had to choose the most profound, it would be the analyst's observation that feelings make fictions real. In addition to those lines that could have come from Plato, who notoriously distrusted both feelings and art, see his The Republic, We also got some good ultra-contemporary commentary from some of the characters in The Matrix Resurrections. I guess my favorite would be Merovinian's, a returning character, who lashes out at both Facebook and Wikipedia in a tense, verge of bursting into action scene. It's probably worth noting that Facebook didn't even exist when we last saw Merv in Revolutions back in 2003, and Wikipedia back then was just a tiny three years old. So his denunciation of these two social media giants is understandable, if not quite fair to Wikipedia, which has done far more good and much less damage than Facebook. Without telling you anything more about the plot, I'll say it's plausible, exciting, and works very well with its three predecessors. The action and special effects were outstanding, as always, and the character's awareness of the deep philosophic issues that underlie their exploits endows this movie with a refreshing intellectual heft. So I'd say The Matrix Resurrections is a triumph of a reboot, and one of the best now around in this burgeoning genre. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief review of The Matrix Resurrections. I'll be back here soon with another episode of Light On, Light Through, very likely a review of the next two episodes of the new series on HBO Max Station 11. And I'll also be back here with some reviews of Dexter, New Blood. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay sound and enjoy. The Light on Light Through podcast. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.